So this well, needs to be charged. Yes, that's the new, uh, as, we, as we record now on this 22nd of June, that's your little amplifier, which needs to be plugged into the USB uh, hub and charged for a couple of hours. And then you unplug oh. it from the hub when you use it because the charging procedure can cause interference. But that's a whole other thing. We'll okay. talk about that. So I shouldn't plug it into charge now while no, we're talking. Leave it, because leave it aside. You don't, your head will blow off. Okay. You don't need it anyway right now. So at okay. least you can well, hear me. I, I thought I'd, yes, I can hear you quite well. Can you hear me? I Are can. Are recording all yeah, of this yeah. for everyone? That's yeah. right. Now this you is look, what goes on at you 5 look to 10. Like an animated mugshot when I start, <laughs> when you come on in the morning. You look like a mugshot gif, you know? We just. Uh, my, oh, oh, really? Okay. Well, my old friend Eddie Toe Wilk Blake. in Ottawa, Toe Blake's Tavern on St. Catherine Street, St. Catherine, Catherine Street. <laughs> yeah, as my great aunt used to say, up near Dakari. Uh, yeah. And mother, mother used to say Boodalil. I've been humming. Are. I've been humming a theme that you might recognize all morning. Dee 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 I was five when it premiered in 1961. You were 23, but I was five. And uh... <laughs> I, I actually, it was on so late for, for me then that I, um, I was a video error. Yeah, I wanted to it show you something. Well. I, I, we'll, get, okay. we'll, get, we'll get through this quickly because Tommy's online. Tommy Harrington is going to okay. join us in a couple of minutes. I wanted to show you and go through some Dick Van Dyke trivia. I will do that later this week. Problem is that Prime is down this morning. Uh, Amazon Prime, which is unusual for them. Uh, so if you are experiencing... Overwhelmed. Yeah, I presume it's something along those lines. So if you're trying to watch Prime today, they're down right across the board. And I wanted to use this as an excuse to give you a suggestion for a website that you may wish to bookmark. And it's called downdetector.ca. And what oh, they do... everything. Zoom they monitor... Time. They don't monitor, physically monitor the services, but they, they record uh, citizen or consumer uh, reports of difficulties with Bell and Rogers and Zoom and Google and all, all the rest of them and, and cell phone companies. And How do you Prime, know all this? Where did you find out this? I've been doing this I, stuff. I, I have no life. You know that. I'm, 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 I'm in this little room God, 20 God. hours a day. I'm, I'm impressed, disappointed. Yeah. Appalled. Appalled. And Prime yeah. Video is one of them. And if you click on Prime Video, you will see that it, it there has been a spike in reports of trouble this morning from all over the place. Uh, so it's I'm simply... actually finding their stuff on Amazon Prime. It's getting the the productions are just getting better and better. There's some actually yeah. some good stuff on there. They're pumping some money in there. So uh, this is at least what it will allow you to do is find out that if, if there is a general consensus that things are going wrong, then you won't have to wait online or send emails or, or phone or something like that, you know. <laughs> and you like find me, that, just, just start, yeah. well, just start yelling at a blank it's, screen. It's, yeah, it's right. Show me, yeah. show me. Yeah, standing in front of a microwave, hurry up. <laughs> That's the old Joe so Rivers. So is Dick Van Dyke being rerun on Prime? Yes, I was watching that... the first episode uh, yesterday oh. for some darn reason. 154 and, Bonnie Meadow Road. And they're watching it on a, uh, a flat screen, computer screen, and four by three. You can see stuff in the background there that was not visible on the old Marconi back in the day. So it's quite something. I'll, I'll, I, what I'll do, I'll do some screen captures this week, and I'll show you some pretty weird things that pop up. Um, but anyway, we'll talk about that. So, okay. it, so it's called downdetector.ca, and uh, it's it's unusual for Amazon. This is Amazon Web Services. That's their logo with the Amazon smile there. If you've seen this logo before, they are one of the larger. Amazon is one of the larger uh, web service suppliers in the world. So they have their own infrastructure and all of that. So it's unusual for them to be down. Uh, so actually, it doesn't look like a smile. It looks phallic. It, um, I hadn't thought Can about that. A, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, a little, that's a little not, flaccid. That's not, not the way, no, that's not the way I see it. I see it perhaps when well, I'm not even going to go where I think I see it. <laughs> yeah, Tom's wow. just left town. Tom has moved back to so, St. John's. Yeah. Speaking of video errors, shall we bring Tom in here? Or yeah, let's you, see what, let's yeah. see what part of his anatomy we see. <laughs> nice feet, Tommy. 
Oh, and it's on Lynn. Oh, there, there you go. Is. Now we can it's see Tom. Can yes. see he's going, I don't like these he's guys. He's taking his glasses off. And <laughs> <laughs> he's got a sewer. There he is. Okay, Tommy. Can you what see What the hell is going on, you guys? <laughs> oh, Tommy, he's just been, he's been recalcitrant and, and bad, and I he's haven't been, helped. Eat more broccoli. <laughs> Yeah, you'll get your iron, my mother used to say. You'll get your iron. How are you? I'm good, my son. We're, we're actually seeing your head, Pally. Yes. Yeah, there it right. is. Yeah, you remember the last time? <laughs> did you look at it? Does it look familiar? Yeah, we saw yes, your breasts. That's, that's yes, right. we did. And you're a <laughs> handsome lad. We want to adopt you. Isn't this, uh, isn't this Newfoundland Day or something today? Uh, it's no, Discovery it's, Day. Uh, tomorrow, I think. Oh. June Okay. There's a bit of a debate about it, isn't there, Tom? About from indigenous, uh, is it Mi'kma in Newfoundland? No, there were the Bjorks, who are now gone. Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, because there is a complaint about Discovery Day that, you know, John Cabot didn't discover Newfoundland. There were plenty of folks there before yeah. he even arrived. So there's a, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I think tomorrow, yeah. I believe tomorrow is Discovery Day because uh, I think um, also St. John's Day for in St. John's, but they, I don't know if they're the same day. It's around now. Uh, and St. Jean-Baptiste is for what, Wednesday, I guess? Yeah, yeah. 24. Yeah. Okay, oh, that's right, of course it is. Uh, St. John is the uh, patron saint of, of Newfoundland, isn't it? Or St. John's was, anyway. If he was, if he was smart, sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who invited him back? <laughs> yeah. Plymouth Rock landed on us. <laughs> I'm not, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Or Flat Rock in this case. <clears throat> We haven't asked him a question yet. How are you, Tom? I'm well, David. Atta boy. Surviving, surviving the COVID, you know. Oh, geez, how's work been? I mean, are you alone or is it sort of crowded in there now or what's going no, on? No, it's the quietest newsroom you could ever walk into. It's, um, I would say on a, well, on, on our show, Worldless Hour, we only have about five people, including the technician and me. And so one of those people is working at home. So our show is staffed by four people. The World at Six, which you do on Fridays, there are about there are four people, five including me, for the on the day of the, on show day, and there's probably nine or ten people working at home. So that's just one example. The national, almost every all the reporters are working at home, pretty much. All the producers are working at home. All the chase, all the current affairs shows, like the current as it happens, they're all the chase producers are working at home. So it's the it's let's put it this way, it's the quietest this, the broadcast center has ever been, and it is the cleanest the broadcast center has ever been. <laughs> oh, I can imagine yeah. that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I remember that newsroom. Is it still on the same floor? What was it? The sixth? Fourth floor, yeah. Fourth floor, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. incredible. You walk in there on a Sunday. It's dead. You walk in there and there's no sound. It's so and strange. it's a huge room. It's, it it's is. just enormous. Yeah. 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 So, I, I mean, I'm going in five days a week. I have been since the lockdown started. Um, I go in um, and I take the subway part of the way, then I walk part of the way, uh, and then I'm, I come back on the subway at night. Um, and, you know, it's actually been fine. It's not that the subways are really not crowded. And, um, and the walk is great because it just sort of I can clear my head before I go into work, maybe listen to a podcast. So it's, um, it's you know, it's been okay. I, you know, I'm, I'm obviously like, like many people not going out much, you know, maybe run to the shop on the weekend, that kind of thing. But but in terms of work, it's fine. It's challenging. The The worst part of it was, we maybe we talked about this when we first met, uh, when although I wasn't all there, um, that the, <laughs> the amount of bad news every day was so awful. Must have been overwhelming. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it really was. It was like I was drinking a, a fire hose full of crap was what it was like. It was so bad. Even the good days were bad. And so mentally, I don't think I realized how much of a toll that could take. You know, there were days when it was really hard. Uh, there was so much bad stuff, particularly in, the, in March and April when the lockdown first began. If you remember, every day something was canceled. Every day something awful was happening, you know. And so um, it, was, it was emotionally tiring. It's a bit better now just because you're used to it, I guess. But I'm taking the month of July off, so that'll be good. <laughs> That's a good idea. Now, wait a minute. In March and April, uh, did you have trouble sleeping? I mean, this is my bit noir, so I'm mean, yeah. taking home that stuff. It gets a little, uh, it gets a little hard to sleep too, and then you yeah, get more I, tired. I've never had, tired. I've never had. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, we've talked about this before, you and I, I know, but I've never had that issue. Uh, fortunately, um, I don't t tend not to take it home. Maybe a glass of wine at the end of the day helps, but um, but no, I, I you know, I've, I've been okay that way. But it's been, it's just there are times where, and it hasn't happened. All, I, I consider myself fairly even keeled, so 
not all, most days are fine. There were just some days where it was bad. And then the thing was when things, the, the only big stories that broke through were, were awful. The mass shooting in Nova Scotia or the helicopter crash and killing the six Canadians. Those are big stories, but unfortunately those are the ones that break through the COVID story, which is so big. And then the Black Lives Matter and the demonstrations as well. So in terms of a news cycle, I mean, for six months, it's been extraordinary. It's been but nuts. It's, Absolutely yeah. nuts. Yeah. yeah. But or for people, a while, or some days it was it was it was a, a very everything you did on the hour or or the world yeah. at six was a variation on the same theme, right? You didn't yeah. go to right, and that's that's yeah. got to take a toll too. I I well, I've never the dealt had to deal with that. Yeah, I think that's true. One of the issues I think early on too was eventually I said to myself, when this sort of quiets down a bit, what else is there to talk about? Because at that point, virtually everything you had to talk about really had to be seen through the, the lens of COVID because it affected sports and entertainment and business and you name it, every subject you managed to cover in a newscast was going through the COVID filter, if you will, because it was everything was affected by it. So that's changed somewhat. I mean, the, the newscasts now have less COVID because they, at least in Canada, things are, are quietening down, uh, aside from Ontario and Quebec, I guess. So um, so the, the subject matter is changing somewhat. So, But for the first little while, it was COVID 24 seven, yeah. What's it like downtown? Are people wearing masks and things? Yeah, um, it, it, on the uh, well, first of all, there's not a lot of people downtown. Like, I, I, if you can imagine coming out in the city of Toronto on a Friday night at, at the, say 9:30 when I leave work after the world at six and go to the subway platform and there's nobody on it. There's nobody in the subway station. Right. Like it's That's extraordinary. Wow. Wow. Or you walk out on the street at 8 8:30 8 when I leave from, from my regular shift and on mm -hmm. Wellington or King Street, there's nobody. So it's, it, I mean, to, to the city's credit, even though this still, Toronto is a hotspot and we haven't opened up yet. The rest of the province by comparison has, but Toronto hasn't. We're still, the shops are, all the shops are closed. You can only, only do takeout, that sort of thing. So uh, Toronto's still way behind other parts of the country, but people are generally speaking adhering to it. Uh, mask wearing is, I would say, two thirds of people wearing masks, certainly when yeah. they're inside, they are outside. I don't wear a mask when I'm outside because unless you're literally standing next to somebody, you're not at risk, but um, you know, mask wearing, I, I pick my spots, I guess, but most people are wearing them now. There is, it's still not mandatory here. It's recommended as you know, same in Quebec. Well, TTC um, uh, July the 2nd, I think, right? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. They're going to, as of July 2nd, they're going to be mandatory to wear it on the subway, the streetcar, buses, whatever you got to wear a mask. Yeah. Yeah. What's it like on the subway? You mentioned taking it every day. Yeah, it's, well, I get on uh, late morning. I'll be getting on in about an hour or so. And, and um, the, it's general, I would say on a, on a car, there might be, uh, I don't know, 10 people. Uh, and of those 10, probably seven are wearing masks. Um, the, the, the most high risk people or the people you might encounter who might be posing a risk are homeless people. The homeless people in Toronto ride the subway a lot because it's, it's, it's cool and somewhere to go. So, and they're not, you know, they're, they're not wearing masks and they, and they're, unfortunately they're, they're facing different challenges. And that was the one thing, I don't know if we talked about this the first time we were on your, on the Grump Pod, but um, how I found as I walked through downtown, and I still do it, I walk from the Bay subway station to CBC about 40 minutes every morning, is you don't see a lot of people on the street. You're seeing more now than you used to, but at the beginning, all you saw pretty much were homeless people. And it was like the, wa like the waters had receded. And what you saw exposed were the homeless of Toronto, right? And on some corners, you'd see three or four guys uh, sleeping on a corner, which was, I'd never seen before. So, um, so in terms of the, the transit system is not, and at night, it's even usually people coming home at that hour are maybe shift workers either going to work, maybe they're, they're cleaning crews or working overnight shifts doing something. Um, there's otherwise nobody's out. Obviously, there's nowhere to go, nothing to do. So. Um, but again, the, the, the cars are, are pretty empty and, and the actual platforms are almost, there might be one person there, which is something that it still strikes me now, three months later, is extraordinary that on a busy city like Toronto, the subway platforms are empty at eight o'clock at night. Especially with a subway that was built in 1954 and is for a city a third the size of what Yeah, Toronto but at, at least you have the BOA trains that. where you can, you can at least uh, distance yourself within the... Yeah within yeah. the train as opposed to the older yeah. cars and things so well and there was actually there was early on maybe it was in april i took a picture um of uh, one of the newer trains where it has no which has no separations and i took and it was there was nobody in it so yeah. as far as the eye could see down the train there were no people it's a and, wild uh, and, sight, I, and, I, sure. and I, I posted it yeah and somebody else picked the london subway the same morning mm. the same day and, and juxtapose the two pictures, and the London subway was rammed with people oh, uh, during, during the outbreak. And uh, well, the Toronto's was empty. It was quite striking. Yeah. 
Well, we've got those new Azure cards, uh, cars in Montreal, uh, Tommy, and they're the same thing. They, they're they the Boas right. here too, yeah. So yeah, yeah. What are they called? So, not, what are they uh, they're Azure. called a Boa because it's like a snake or a snake. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. they're seamless, if you will. So never. Uh, let's get into uh, what you're looking forward to in July. You're going to travel. You're going to go uh, someplace, or well, you know? one of the one of the challenges we all have is like, where do you go? Balconville, right? Right. I mean, we will we'll probably go to the cottage a bit. We have a cottage north of Toronto, about an hour and a half away. So we'll go there for a few couple weekends, and uh, and we've already like it's interesting just within the dynamic of our family. So it's my in my late in laws cottage. So my wife and her brother and sister share the place. And so they've worked coordinated a schedule where there'll be only uh, no no guests. So it'll just be us going up at a time. And, um, and there'll be it will allow at least three days between each visit. Um, and so there's already rules around making sure that we keep the cottage intact, right. And one of the issues in Ontario, maybe you may have heard is and maybe it's the same in Quebec, but um, people who live in communities in cottage country, don't want the guys from the big people from the big city coming, right? Yeah. It so is, that's been an issue, issue here. here. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, you know, we're closer to the smallest or the, the smallest town next to us is Fenland Falls. A little further away is Lindsay. Those are the two kind of communities. So, and they're at the Korthas are not the Muskokas, but they're busy. So that's been an issue. But so far, it seems that that kind of died off. There was a lot of fuss back about a month ago uh, around the long weekend, the May long weekend about people coming from Toronto to their cottages and people were concerned they'd show up in town and spread the virus. The irony was, at least in the Korthas, if you remember at the one early part of the outbreak, there was a nursing home, there was a massive outbreak where a couple of dozen people died. That was actually in um, the Korthas. Sorry, it was near Peterborough. So yeah, near Peterborough. And, they, and, all, and all the people who were affected by it live in that area. So like it wasn't imported, it actually happened there. Right. And what they're doing, you know, just an aside, we, we went there for three summers straight because Betsy's mom and dad lived in Toronto and we, of course, were in Montreal, so we'd sort of meet halfway, but it was strange. I don't know what it's like now, but it was strange in the 401. You'd get to the X that would take you north to Peterborough and then into the Kawarthas and the traffic coming from Toronto was just mm. chock of block. It's insane. People My parents... are driving two and a half hours. They don't even think about it because yeah. they got to get out of the big smoke for a while. Well, My and parents think had about a place the in, in Mus I'm sorry. Right. My parents had a place in Muskoka for years too. And that 400, oh, yeah. that 400 oh. was, you could walk on the cars. It would be faster too. <laughs> to yeah. And that's one of the great things about where we are because the Korth is by our, you know, on a good traffic day, I can get there in an hour and 35 minutes. So oh, uh, whereas whereas Muskoka is like as you said like yeah. three and if the traffic's bad Insane. four or five hours yeah. Yeah. Uh, and on the four hundred one say going east if you're going towards um, going towards Kingston or whatever and you have places near there that's two and a half without an accident five with an accident so we we have we're pretty lucky it's it's a pretty close uh, in terms of cottage country in Ontario it's so strange to talk about hours like an hour and a half or two hours when people can go like in, in Montreal, I can go somewhere in an hour or less. Oh yeah. And be, and, yeah. and be in the country or, or Newfoundland, you're getting 15 minutes. You can be in the country. Yeah. Um, so Toronto is different, but you, you know, the, I remember my, uh, my brother-in-law used to say when he talked about uh, when you were having where people were looking for cottages under two, under two was the, the price and the time right back in yeah. the nineties kind of thing, <clears throat> because, and, and I, I've driven, I've been, done the Muskoka a few times and I get on that highway next day to myself, Thank God I don't have to do this every oh, weekend. Ian, it's yeah. terrible. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But what they're starting here, and of course, cottage business is huge here too. The uh, mm -hmm. you were saying the the locals don't want the uh, the out of towners hanging out, so they're doing grocery delivery and they're arranging for all sorts of different things here too. Because they, really, okay, they, yeah, they want the income obviously of the yeah. influx. But uh, so yeah, they're organizing rather quickly here too. So I hope they yeah. Can, that's you interesting. Well, I'll be I'll be curious to see if that's the case where, when we go up. We're going to go up actually this weekend coming for a couple of days. So I don't. We'll bring our own stuff. But I'm I'm wondering if that's the case up there as well because it would be you're right. It'd be extremely lucrative. Yeah. Um. And and people are you know people who have cottages who live in Toronto or or Toronto area, you know they they say well you like us there to spend the money and you like our tax you know and the taxes are pretty high there, uh and then but you don't want us to come because you think we're going to make you sick and Toronto mm -hmm. you know I, I think that 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 tension appears to have dissipated now there was okay. at the beginning. Um, but uh, in terms of the delivery thing, there's a real opportunity. I, I'm curious if that's what's happening. So well, yeah. maybe maybe there's something going on. Anyway, um, everyone is well. Lynn is yeah, well. Yeah, everybody's good. Yeah, daughter our daughter well. Emily's good. home. Yeah, okay. she's uh, splitting her summer between London and Toronto, and um, she's still, you know got a bit more university left to go. And Lynn is good, re enjoying retirement. And we've been trying to have little uh, mini 
bubbles or circles or whatever. So we've had a couple of neighbors over for a glass of wine outside. And my brother-in-law, was really my brother-in-law and his wife came over a couple of weekends ago. They brought their own drinks. They brought their own cups. Uh, we made them a separate plate of, you know, um, hors d'oeuvres or whatever that they could have. And we had our own. But that was fun. It was better than Zooming. No offense, boys. Yeah. But uh, no, no, I'd rather but, I mean, see you in person. Yesterday. Yeah. yeah we, we got the grandkids yesterday for the first time. And they're lucky. They've got a pool. Oh, so wow. So you get the five-year-old in the pool and the old man in the pool. <laughs> and it was just, it was a tonic. It really yeah, was. Yeah. It was, it was How are you guys doing? We're fine. We're, I mean, it's uh, been, God, I've been st stuck in here since March, but um, uh, a tonic. And you know how much he get, loves to get out and mix. Yes. Yeah. yeah I like, I'd like to get out and <laughs> I just walk down Main Street and just wave at people. Wave and, at people. Yeah. That's right. I remember yeah. you used to do that. Yeah. yeah. Are you going to finish that sandwich, sir? So. Um, yeah. No, I, no, I miss no, our, it's... I miss our July, I miss our Canada Day parades though. I have to admit. <laughs> Oh my God! That was what yeah, was that? Well, they, they the coldest canceled. July first in Montreal history. I think it was like four degrees or something like that. Yeah, and, oh uh, God! Were you guys in an open car or something? Yeah. Oh yes, oh, yes. And the, Ebony, and the Ebony models. The Ebony models. Yes, yep. that's an old and, story. Um, we'll have to tell some other time. Yeah, exactly. No, that was uh, yeah. That yeah, was but you guys been were in an open car on St. Patrick's Day too, which we is were. even yep. colder. Oh, yeah, actually, I think God, it was, I think it was colder been. July first than March that year. <laughs> no <laughs> kidding. <laughs> I should have worn a toque. Yeah, that was, anyway, good memories. Oh, and that wind tunnel along St. Catherine, right? So you're yeah, going yeah. along there, and the wind chill is about minus 25. Yeah, I know that one. Yeah. So when's the last time you were in Newfoundland, just to finish up on that? Well, it's funny you should mention that, because we had sort of a tentative plan to go this summer, um, to see my brother who's there and uh, some friends, and maybe go in August when the, there's, this, um, there's the Writers' Festival on the West Coast of the island, which uh, Stephen Brunt was involved in creating like 20-plus years ago. And uh, we talked about going this summer, and of course now we can't because there's a travel ban. Basically, and if, even if you're from Newfoundland, you still can't go. Oh, still I think on. you can go. And I think under certain circumstances, like if you have an ailing parent, you have like you got to almost get a letter from your whatever your doctor to go. So I'm like it's completely restricted. Excuse me, but it's somewhat restricted. And um, so you know, and the other issue is if you travel from outside, they want you to quarantine. So those, if we're going to go to Newfoundland, we'd have to stay there for at least two weeks. Oh, so, okay. mm. um, so I think we've we'll, we've scrapped that plan. So, uh, so I haven't been since last time we were there was twenty fourteen, I guess, for a family reunion. Oh, okay, so it's yeah. been a while. Oh, that's six okay. years. Yeah, 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 yeah. And where's yeah. the so festival? It's... You say it's on the west coast. Is it in Stephen? Yeah, it's or? it's in Norris <laughs> Point, and um, it's called the Writers Festival. It's it's become ex huge. Um, Sheila Rogers has been involved with it as well. Um, and they have multiple writers visiting and lecturing and talking about their stories. And of course, it's in, uh, there's a lot of uh, live uh, theater in that part of Newfoundland now. So you can build a whole vacation around it. Uh, you have to book like, like literally almost a year in advance to get a, like, a place to stay because there's not a lot of choices. But it's become quite a vibrant festival, which I've not, I've, I've known people who've been there. I have some friends who've been there and they say it's just quite a, it's quite a, a week. So uh, one of these days I'll get down there for that, but I'd like to get home. It would be nice to get home. It's been a while. I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, enjoy yeah. your vacation, buddy. Cause July Thank is you, about, it's about uh, what, how many days away now? It's coming about up real quick. So, yeah. yeah. So you still can't add, can you? you enjoy your vacation. Add. Then I'm going to be stuck with dickhead over here for the next little while. <laughs> Tommy, actually, be careful. If you're walking today, I bet you it's kind of like here in the big smoke. It's hot. Yeah, no, I know. I mean, know. it's yeah. really yeah. It's, humid. Uh, it's hot and humid here. It's, it's over a bit overcast today. It's been pretty hot, hot the last few days, but that's fine. It's like it's, I'm, uh, you know, I go in and, and I'm soaking wet. It's disgusting. Yeah, yeah, I was going to, I was going to say, I was going to mention it, but yeah, you are the Mr. Mr. Perspiration. He thinks yes, of indeed. perspiring yeah. and he perspires. <laughs> Yeah. Unlike Edison was let not, what was it ninety nine percent perspiration? That's that's me. Yeah. That's right. yeah. 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 I'm just a, I, I walk in like a giant shower. tea bag on two legs. <laughs> well send us pictures, Tommy. Yes. And it's, sure. it's good to see it's follow yeah. my Twitter yeah. feed. It's good yeah, to see your it's good, it's good to see your whole head. Yeah. Uh, here you go. Here oh, you go. Man. We love you, Tommy. We love you. See you guys. Anytime. Yeah. Say hi to I, the family. Take care, pal. Will. I want to squeeze summer. those dimples someday soon. Adorable. Au revoir. A bon voyage. Au revoir. Bon courage. <clears throat> oh boy, gotta love him. Well, he's a great guy. He's uh, working hard, man. He's, he is. He yeah. is. He is a stalwart exactly. broadcaster, and we were saying that last time, and uh, it's worth repeating because uh, it's good to hear him on the air. Well, you can you imagine somebody from home putting together 
uh, a report from say Moscow or something like that. And then I, I, I guess with the technology, you can get it into the newsroom, but still, if you're not actually with the person going over a, a report from London or, or even from Montreal to Toronto, it must be a little awkward to get used to for a while. Well, the, tele the television yeah. version would be even more awkward. Yeah, but still, it's, you, you can tell the wheat from the chaff here with people who adjust and uh, pros yeah. get the job done, and that's what Tommy is. So, Well, it's interesting. He was talking about King Street, which is just the banking center of the country, and there was a huge article. I know all of them are doing it. The trading floors are now in people's basements. They're just, you know, yeah. TD being one of them, just one of them. And everybody's at home in Mississauga or uh, Orangeville or that, but they're they're working on the floor. They're managing to get the job done. My mother lives in yeah. downtown Toronto as well, and she still manages to get out, pick up her groceries, and uh, it's all... Oh, she does get out. Eh? Oh, yes, she does. She goes out very early in the morning, and she goes to the local metro. Uh, it's about a block and a half from her house, and they have hours reserved for seniors. So first thing in the morning, seniors only are admitted and uh, all carefully uh, ushered around the store with all of the various precautions and she carries her stuff home and she's fine so do people uh, do uh, distancing oh yes i she mean says, that's part of young street i'm sure it's changed it's very, very busy but as tom says uh, this, you can fire a cannon down the street in the morning now too i mean that's going to yeah. change eventually but uh, anyway one day at a time so there you go our old buddy in ottawa eddie woke and i just we are that age well you're not quite it but i am uh he goes at he goes up in Ottawa to seniors morning, eight o'clock, and gives people hell if they're not wearing a mask. You yep. know Eddie. Eddie's a longtime that. CBC producer. Yeah, we should get Eddie people. on. Yeah, we should. Yep. He makes these lovely uh, T-shirts, old Toe Blake's Tavern, which no longer exists on St. Catherine Street. Uh, Eddie would be great to talk yep. to. All right. Well, let's yeah. give him a shout later on today. Well, I'm glad uh, to see uh, that you're doing well. Our microphone situation is very stable this morning. I'm very pleased to report that. I made some changes on the weekend, so I'm hoping that that's going to hold. And uh, yeah. tomorrow... It, it kind of scares me that you can get into my house while I'm not here. Right? Yeah, you did all this uh, when I was away right. or asleep. Yeah. All of those yeah, little it's, brownish, it's brownish shots of you <laughs> going to the doctor with your mother and all that kind of stuff. Um, who's, who's with us tomorrow? Uh, we've got Rachel uh, Cadell Monroe. She runs uh, an organization, among other things, she runs an organization called Sea Change, which it's interesting, w uh, deals with uh, uh, communities up north in northern Quebec, actually, I think in, in the territories as well. Uh, and of course, they are facing, facing challenges on top of COVID. Uh, for diseases that are rampant in the communities anyway, which complicate uh, COVID. So they're trying, I mean, they're trying to get what we've been trying to get in this damn country for years is clean running water yeah. and dealing with social problems. It's, it's, it's our yeah. national and international disgrace. And that's been hanging in round like syst systemic racism too for a long oh, time. It's oh, not yeah. as if it's I, some new thing here. It's been Yeah, and part if the people in the northern communities end up in the cities, they're driven out of town and left there. And it's so... She is uh, amazing. She's a and it could be argued that it is systemic racism, actually. Would it, oh, if you definitely. want to get right down no to it, that's what it. it is. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, okay. those guys, was it in Winnipeg or Vancouver? They beat the hell out of some guy. Yeah. Oh, it was in Winnipeg. Yeah. RCMP cops. Beat some okay. guy up. We'll pick that up with her tomorrow. We'll pick it um, up on a, a happier note. But she's, uh, she's changing things. So. Okay. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to talking with her.